Welcome in to the oh, DNVR Avalanche you Podcast. Get, you make it bigger. We got AJ, we got Eric, we got Rudo. As the Blues lose to the Avs 4-1. to one. In one that felt pretty routine for Colorado. Weird way to phrase that. Yeah, I would tell the other team first for once. Yeah, because yeah. when you said lose, I was like... The Avs won. Right. That's for sure. They're back in the W column. Their vitamin W's are getting taken tonight. Woo woo. That's for sure. Yeah, we don't have any vitamin W. We don't have any winner shots. I mean, we'll get to 100 likes, right, chat? You can do that for us to get some winner shots going. Uh, like 60 second rundown to kick things off, I suppose. So I suppose. Let's start with that. You can't. You can't. No, I don't need a timer. I'll do it without the timer. Do it live. Yeah. Uh, first period, Avs did the thing where they score goals. It's a good thing to do, unlike the last two games. Uh, made it look a whole lot easier <laughs> tonight. Uh, they pick up two in the first. Honestly, really, we're always in control of this game. Second period felt a little bit slower. It wasn't really bad from Colorado or anything like that. It just wasn't quite as active. They end up giving up a bit of a late goal in the period that you didn't love. Not your favorite thing in the world, but... Honestly, it was okay because they took care of business in the third period. In games that they've been competitive in, they've continued to be very, very dominant in that period specifically. Uh, super, super impressed by not just Colorado's best players, but all of their players in the third period to put a game away. Hmm. What? What? Go ahead. Riley Tufty's cool. Don't listen to AJ. That's the end of my 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are so out of control with this stuff. Oh my god, calm down over there. I'm. I feel like I'm the only one who is calm. He played decent tonight. All right. I'm not saying he's a world beater or anything. Still lying. <laughs> uh. Anyway. <laughs> Let's get back. Uh. Get back to the start of this game here. Is it any surprise? I know we said it in the pregame show. It was going to be your big guns that show up and get the job done for you. I can we just before we get into the game, how absurd it was that people who live in Colorado couldn't okay, even, sure, we couldn't even watch this. the yeah. damn thing. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I know. Uh, the NHL has made this so difficult. Yep. And then you combine that with altitude said it was a technical issue. I I don't know what the problem was, but if you're going to black out the national broadcast your broadcast should probably be working. Unreal, man. Put it to you that way. Yeah, so watching the beginning of the game was a challenge. Yep. A Couldn't even get it on it. in the bar. Like, we had, to, we had to get creative. Yep. In order to watch the first part of this game. It was crazy, man. Tough look. People Tough outside look. of Colorado were like, oh, what's the issue? Mm -hmm. But here, it was a total fiasco. Yep. Anyway, I just wanted to... I wanted to touch Make on note what, a, what a true nightmare it actually was tonight. Yep. To get to that. Anyway, to my point. Good game. We know, like, the top guys, for the most part, were the drivers of this game. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. But. Mm. They aren't the ones who get the abs on the board first. Yeah. The, the, Eric, I think it was you who called it out after uh, Colton scores the first goal for the abs. You could see the uh, energy. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and it's a delayed reaction. He turns. Make sure that and thing's then in all the net. of a sudden yeah. it's like, whoa, there's a lot of pressure, right? Because everybody's been asking them to produce a little bit, right? Yep. And then you see, I'm talking about Colton, and then he gives it the old, like, you know, sh sh pump, and then yep. you see Wood coming over, and he's almost like falling down like a bowling ball, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like going around. That's just typical Miles. Yeah, Wood, that's what right? I'm saying. <laughs> like, oh, it was awesome because you could see they were pumped. They're like, okay, we got the first goal, we got the, our team on the board. Did our job, and uh, it, it was fun to see. And it was fun to see their their emotions, which is very important. And you know, the Avs play with emotions, and they started get on the board. They, I thought they played a good game, and it was good to see that line scoring, like you said. It was good yeah. to see the big boys scoring too, and um, you know, it was fun. So well, and, and it takes the lid off of a number of things. Ross Colton gets his first real goal as an Av. Yep, that's right. That line generates a real Damn, goal that doesn't get taken goal away. In 130 minutes, and like. then yeah, the team gets shut out twice in a row. And so yeah. hey, you're what was it like 10 minutes or something into the nine game? nine minutes, yeah, nine minutes into the game. Yeah, you get off to a one nothing start, and 
The starts have been uh, here and there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of uh, so far this season. Giving and up it, the first a number of it times. It wasn't a yeah. great start, but to cash in and get a goal, it, like process wise, you would you could say, hey, we want a better start. Well, but that but, goal goes in and you see the abs gas up a little bit. Exactly. Right? The abs work their way into the game more than you'd probably like. But we've also talked about how this game is essentially a road game because it's your fourth game in your fourth yep. different city. And you're going right back home. out on the road it, after yeah, this. They leave tomorrow, like, right. dude. Like they, they're not hanging around here. They get on an airplane tomorrow after practice. Yeah. I, I always talk about it, the game back after a road trip, but I, I believe that was such a good schedule draw there because they had that extra day in between. Then, yeah. I, for me, it gets erased. So if they would have had no gas, then I would say, God, you know what I mean? Like, come on. There's no excuse, you know what I mean? But what I... <laughs> What I'm trying to say is to get back to that that goal there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's a treat to play with guys like McKinnon, Ranton, and McCarr, like back then, Sackick, Forsberg. You know what I'm trying to say is it's a privilege to to be on that team and to be with guys like that because you're always going to be secondary guys. And if you are guys like Colton, they are secondary guys. But it's such a nice blanket above you. But you got to do your job too, and you got to mm-hmm. you got to produce and you got to help those guys once in a while. And you know what I mean. To the liking of any, all of us, everybody themselves, yeah. they just haven't done enough, I would say, in the first eight games. So it was nice to see them tonight, actually. Get on the board, get the ball going, get the ball arena going, you know, no pun well, intended. But, and you know, it was nice to see. And I want to give Colton a lot of credit here because I think over the last two losses for the Avs, one of the biggest criticisms we had was these guys are getting way too cute. They're trying to do too yeah. much with it. He gets a semi-break. He goes to the net and he just shoots the thing. Yeah. He doesn't try anything crazy. Just puts the puck away with solid hockey. I don't remember who it is for St. Louis that's trying to come back. Yeah, he just he just outplays it. them. Yep, and then beats Bennington. You know, it's there, there's no like nothing secret, fancy there. There's yep. no secret sauce there. Yep. Miles Wood gets it up the wall to him. He skates into it, beats his guy in a one on one, and then beats the goaltender. Like that's. <laughs> it's funny when it works like that. You're like, oh, <laughs> hockey's so easy. Yeah. Like, the, <laughs> oh well. We're, all, oh, some, we're, we're always talking about when there's a big goal drought. We're like, it's going to be something greasy. It's going to be some nonsense, some <laughs> nope. schoolyard nonsense that breaks nope. it. Sometimes no, it's this just is, simple hockey. Yeah. Right. And oh. like you take advantage of a really bad Blues defense. For sure. Uh, de- t- defensively as a team, they horrific. Are yeah. They are horrific defensively. <laughs> For my money, a bottom five team in the NHL, team-wide defense, defense core, all of it. Just They're bad. bad. Yeah. That I don't think Jordan Bennington's very good, but he is getting no help. He does not get a lot of help most nights. And and it's not like that Ross Colton scoring chance that he scores on is like it's not all high. Old. Yeah, it's not like, oh man, what 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 can he do? He's just a, a little off his angle, yeah, over rotated to the he short just side. Yeah. Beats him. Yep. And that for Ross Colton, that's so good. Oh yeah. Like that is so good. And we got to see we got to see a little bit more of what we've kind of expected out of him and Wood in particular, I, but that line in general. I, LOC was a very good fit next to them. When they signed Worked Ross great. Colton, that was the guy they signed. The, the guy who made exactly yeah. that play. This like the, the you know, it's always easy to point to a guy when he plays his best and be like, that's what we've been waiting for. But those were the skills they saw. But yeah, like, like that's the guy that they were like, we want. 50 of these right. from him, and then we'll take the other 30. He might have just already had eight out of those 30. <laughs> not, that, not that he's been bad. No, I, he no, has not no. been. He's he actually, really I think he's been, been very good defensively, but yeah. they need that offense to come for him, for sure. So it's and, and that's a great goal for everybody involved, as Eric said. It yep. just lifts everybody up, and everybody can kind of relax after that. Yep. Because I had talked in the pregame show, if they get a couple of really good scoring chances after being shut out two games in a row... And they don't cash. Oh yeah, the the, the frustration, the confidence goes quick. down. Yeah. The sticks get gripped a little bit. It's just going to turn into a, a more frustrating exercise until it goes in. Nine minutes into the game, it goes in pretty quickly. Everybody can kind of. We're still the Colorado Avalanche. We're good. Yep. Uh, the second goal, I think it's no secret. I believe every single game the Avs have won this year, they've at least tied the special teams. Most of them, they've won them. They do it tonight. With the power play side coming through, uh, I mean, you know, what do you say on a goal stat line that goes ranting in from McCarr from McKinnon? <laughs> and I think I think the altitude broadcast actually, for once, broke down some hockey on a decent level. 
Because if you watch that, you watch the way that those three players play off of each other. Yep. The other guys don't have to do anything because the respect that those three guys garner and the way that they Creates abuse so space. Much room, I did a film yeah. room on this earlier this year over this exact topic. Yep. And they, you saw the same thing tonight. Those guys... When they're moving around, especially when McKinnon rotates and McKinnon around a lot, on the power play was all over. And, and on that goal, yeah. you see him; he's st- he's in the middle of the ice when they really. And then he works his way up up top and back out to the to the side. And as that happens, their PK has to get pulled out, and that that gives Ranton in the space yeah. in the middle of the ice to get the puck and skate into. And if you're going to give Miko Ranton in space, you're going to skate lose. into. You're going to lose. Yeah. The, the guy is going to make you pay. He's he's just too good of a goal scorer to give. Opportunities to like that. Is that one mine? Yeah. What is this? What is this? Fuck. Okay. I got you. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> it not to be high maintenance. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. But you are. Yeah. No. It's all Miko's good. first goal in the NHL was one step into a wrister from the right circle. Michael Hutchinson still hasn't seen that puck. <laughs> and like. If there's one spot on the ice that you look at and say, don't give Miko space, it's that. It's there. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, well, and what you like is that we've seen him, even this season, score. It's not like he picks one corner. Well, you know what? Yeah. McKinnon. He'll shoot a far side, close side. Yeah, yeah. McKinnon and, gets a little in love with trying to go into the same spot over yeah. and over and over and over. Yep. Uh, it's one reason why his shooting percentage is a little lower than a guy like Miko. Um, but Miko can go anywhere, so there's no book on him. The book is just don't let him do that. Well, and that and it's exactly what he does here. It beats Bennington on the short side. Yeah, like I mean, a, a lot of people will say Ovechkin is probably the best shooter from the other circle. For me, Ranton on that side, he's one of the best in the league. I, I yeah. don't know who's better than him at picking that corner through traffic or like you said, any corner. So I, I mean, that whole side who of the would ice. You have on he's, that list. I don't know. I'm on, on that side on the for right me. Wing he's side, like, yeah. On that it'd be, side, it'd be like dry sidle, maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure. that's a good. I mean, all very similar. Uh, yeah, you know what? Even very he, similar. He, a lot of him is cutting to the middle, though. Yeah, but, but I'm talking about just standing still, right there, I mean, Miko. Yeah. He's deadly, deadly. He's been like the most prolific I, power I, play I hear player you, for. But, no, I know, but I'm talking about like standing still from the right circle. Yeah, and, oh my god, he just, doesn't miss. He doesn't yeah, miss. he's. Fantastic. The thing is, Miko has the triple threat goal score, right? He's a great wrister. He's a great <laughs> one-timer and arguably one of the best backhands in the world. And, like, and then sometimes he'll go down next to the goaltender yeah. and go with the little chip shot and the behind the goal line banks. The guy can do and when it comes to goal scoring. There may not be more versatile a goal scorer in the NHL than that guy. Yeah, honestly, it's ridiculous how good he is at it. He's fantastic. Elite. Elite. And and that's the thing. Like, how do you, when the Avs power play is going, how do you defend it? You can't. You have to mark Makar and McKinnon and Miko. Well, and that's why you see penalty kills get crushed all the time because they have to, they have to make a choice about which guy to pressure on the puck. Because if you just let those guys do what they want, they'll beat you. <laughs> yep. Pick your poison. That's and, what it and, is. Yeah. And so when the puck gets out high, we see teams do this a lot. We're on their PK. They try and pressure They'll out just high. just full send it. Yep. Because those guys are so talented. Those three guys in particular are so talented. They take chances that other teams don't with the puck where they send high-risk passes back and yep. forth from between the blue line. Yep. When there's a guy in the middle, they throw sauce passes back and forth to each other. Yep. So teams say, hey, we're going to try and this is where we're going to use that. This is the poison that we've picked. And we saw on that 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 goal by Rantanen, yep. they, they sent picked, it. They, they picked their it. poison yep. and they died. Yep. And it, it's a kind of a double whammy, too, because we see the Avs love to abuse that seam that opens up. Yeah. When you play aggressive up high. So. And McKinnon loves it. Yep. And the the other the other aspect of this about spe- specifically about Miko Rantanen is that he's such an all world passer as well. Yep. That if you overcommit to the shot, he'll just back in response. Sauce you. Yeah. He can well he can do that. And he, <laughs> but on the forehand, he'll he can just one touch that thing yep. to Arturi Lekkinen yep. or Ryan Johansson, whichever Whoever's whatever there, yeah, whatever that alignment may be at the time. But yeah, those two guys in the middle of the ice, all they have to do is take what's given to them. Yep. And then when it looks like a guy is going to shoot, just stand in front of the goaltender, try and get tips, try and get deflections, create a little chaos, and have your puck retrieval be really good. <laughs> And when you see the power play work like that, you're like, how the f- how do these guys not score more on this unit? <laughs> not wrong. Not wrong on that one. Uh, on that note, we are brought to you by the folks over at Bet 
three six five. Go over there. Of course, they like their sports to be never ordinary. They want every play to be epic, whether it's a, a power play or an empty net or whatever it might be. You can gamble on it when it comes to Bet365. Sign up with the DNVR365 code. You can get amazing bets and bonuses every single day, including the uh, DNVR custom bet, which we get to throw up there. Tonight, it was uh, both Nuggets and Avs to win, which didn't happen. But uh, the Avs took care of business, so at least there's that. Uh, Tons of different stuff to bet on there. Of course, we have pregame bets all the time, too, so be sure to check those out over with Bet365. Uh, and, you know, use the DNVR365 code when you do to sign up to get awesome bonuses mm. and let them know that we sent you over there. Uh, of course, with Bet365, you must be 21 or older and physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh, and then we're also brought to you by the folks over at Hero Bread. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to get yourself some Hero Bread yet, you got to go check it out. Uh, you can get it off of Amazon if you want it the easy way, but if you want to get the great deal, be sure to head over to hero.co today. That's H-E-R-O dot C-O today to order your Hero Bread. It's great stuff, mostly because it you can actually eat it. I know a lot of people who are like, oh, I, I can't eat bread because I'm on this or that or the other thing. Hero Bread's a low-carb option that'll fit whatever lifestyle or dietary constraints you have. It has 5 to 10 grams of protein per slice. It's got no sugar per slice. It's just a super great option for everybody to uh, eat on a regular basis if you haven't given it a try yet. They also have buns, tortillas, and other options as well. So it's not just bread if you, if you want to make a quesadilla or something like that. You can do that with Hero Bread, too. Again, that's hero.co to save 10% today with the DNVR code. Uh, go check them out. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. Before we go any further, let's talk about Prosvitov. Makes 28 of 29 saves, one goal performance, a solid night. I don't think you're going to ask him to do a whole lot more. But at the same time, don't think any jobs were earned out there tonight. No? Hey, listen, he, you know, he was asked to play, and I thought he played well. He did what he had to do, uh, made the saves that he had to make, and, you know, he gave you uh, – the way you got to look at it is it was a weaker opponent in a sense, no For sure. bashing the St. Louis Blues, but um, I think Georgiev needed a little break. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Georgiev needed a little break, and, and, and job done. He did the job. As a backup, you go in there. He hasn't played in a long time, right? Because he hasn't played the last few weeks in a re you know real game. Um, you see shots in practice. It's a little different in games. It's different releases from opponents and tendencies. And you got to remember, you practice against the same guys every day. You kind of know, and you can look good in practice. And then you go to play a game, and <laughs> different shooters, they haven't seen their releases. And, and for goalies, it's very important. And, you know, obviously, it's game situation. There's more pressure. It's like, you know. Yep, well, I think your golf game when it's like doesn't count, you know. And <laughs> when you it's get easy, a little yeah. money, it's easy, right? So, but hey, he did the job. Give Georgiev a break, which he needed to do, and the Avs bounced back. And I, I, I thought they obviously played their best defensive game it, the last, you know, three, four, five game, whatever it was. It, I think that you know, again, yeah, job done and move on. I do want to talk about that a little bit more, but let's do our winners yeah. shots here first. Mm. Thank you, chat, for getting us to 100 likes. We appreciate you. Cheers over here. Cheers over there. Get your vitamin W, chat. Yep. I still hate tequila. <laughs> uh, Appreciate you taking the bullet. Yeah, someone had to do it. Uh, <laughs> I just can't. I can't, dude. That's um, just a no-go for me. Uh, you and AJ were talking about this during the game a little bit. Yeah. It's Prozvatov's first start in an Avs jersey. He's the backup goalie. It's, it's first start in nearly a month. Anywhere. Yeah. Fair. He hadn't played since the preseason, so like, uh, I, I guess he had those like five saves in the relief, yeah, appearance that he one played game, seven minutes oh. of a game that was not competitive, right? Not meaningful. So it's his first real game in a month. Uh, as a skater, how aware are you of it when that guy's getting the start? You mean on your own team? Yeah, like yeah, the I mean, skaters. I, you want to do? I heard. I was listening to guys in morning skate this morning talking about. This guy's worked hard. He showed up at practice. He works hard. He's always there for the extra guys afterwards. Guys were excited that he was getting in. Seems to be a nice fella. 
good for him, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, honestly. And then <laughs> he, he went out there, and I think as a team, you you do you you do. I don't care what people say; it, it is human nature. You do play a little differently, and and you don't want him to get peppered. You don't want him. Listen, let's not kid ourselves. Georgie, last few games got. A lot of great A chances right off the bat in a lot of games. And, and it's tough as a goalie. You're not even settling in. So for sure, there was a point made. Hey, let's let's help this this guy out. You know, let's help this guy out. It's his first game as win an Avalanche jersey. Let's make sure we don't get him peppered. And job well done. Job well done by the team in front of him. Job well done by him. He he did what he had to do. He was pretty squared in the first period, right? Pox, he's a big goalie. He's a tall goalie. He's not... I don't know how to describe it, but he's, you know, if he's in the right position, he's a big guy, the puck's going to hit him, and it did. And he made some nice saves in the first, and then, you know, uh, second and third, uh, he got, you know, a couple times tested and battling, and he he looked to be a battler. He looked to be a non-quitter, and he did his job. Your job as a backup is to go in there and win some games and to help your starter. The worst thing you can do is you go in there, and you get peppered, and then you get pulled, and then (laughs) you... Georgie has to go back in on his night off. And a lot of coaches will be like, oh, I don't want to do this. And sometimes it does get ugly. You know what I mean? And then it gets to say, and then all of a sudden you're mentally hurt by that game. Not Georgie, but yourself, right? And then you're like, oh, God, I let the team down. And, and then the coach doesn't want to pull you because he wants to give the starter a rest. Yeah. And then it just kind of gets out of hand and it snowballs. So it was a perfect night for them uh, as a team, as a goalie, and as a, you know, as a decision. You know, to give Georg, you have a break. Uh, it, it looks awesome on the coaching staff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Worked out. Plan went to plan yep. totally tonight for Colorado on that front. So do I have to be the hater then? Yeah, go ahead. I, I, look, I, I think I'm ultimately going right. to agree more with what you're about to say, but he also did win the game. So, That's like, it. I'm going to, everything that I say, I preface with he did his job. Yep. Tonight did not inspire a ton of confidence in me, me that he's going to be able to do his job at this level consistently moving forward. There are a lot of shaky moments tonight for me, uh, especially as the game went on. Puck I think, tracking was not great. I think the first yeah. 30 minutes, I really had very few, very few I, complaints. The first goal was kind of the start of the... In the first goal against, like, it's not great defensively. No, there when, are lots of other problems When, when there. Robert Thomas is in the center of the ice. Yeah. But you know who's not in the center of the ice? I have a top is stuck on the right side. Yep. It's not like a all world shot just beat him. He was way off of his angle. I am far from an expert on goaltending. And it was obvious and to you. To me, yeah. it looked I'm like, geez, man. An NHL an NHL forward is gonna be able to pick that much room. You give him that Every much time. space, yep. it's gonna be a tough save to make. Yep. Because Prozvatov doesn't, he doesn't, he did not shuffle the feet very well. Uh, there's not a lot of side to side that you can feel uh, good about. Yep. And the the issues that I I had with his play tonight involved him moving side to side more than anything else. The way that he reads the play looks fine. Yep. The way that he tracks a puck looked fine. Mm, I didn't love his puck tracking, but, but I I didn't I didn't think that the side to side, the lateral movement, it didn't look comfortable for him. There's a number of plays where it looks like the Blues have really good scoring chances. He's off his angle a little and bit. It just kind of hits him. Yeah. Oh, like he had the one that glanced off of his blocker. And a second he, later, he's, before yeah. he even reacts to it, it goes off of his blocker and then his arm flails or flares. And the puck is in the corner by the time he has begun reacting to it. And go back to my comment. That's exactly what I say. He was a bad, like he battled, but I agree yeah. with you. Do I think it's smooth? Is, no, I think he's just a bigger well, goalie. That's not the sm- he's not Georgiev's feet. You know, I always talk about Georgie's feet. Yeah, it's not close. No, no. And, and here's the problem for me. That's there. a tough bar to yeah. live up to. No, no, I know. I, I was yeah, expect- I'm yeah, top I know. five I know. in the league. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm being the hater <laughs> no, right now. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. like, hey, there were yeah, things I, I didn't like, yeah, but yeah. like, that's a t- that's an unfair. No, ask. but I not, say, not that you. No, are. but I always say. I always say. Georgie is number one in the it, league. For me, yeah. in the blue crease, is the best feet in the league. This, you can see the difference. Here's That's why it's yeah. Very Same fair. Point. Very yeah. fair. Here's I'm good with that. My uh, problem. It's the St. Louis Blues. 
And I get you can only beat the team you're playing on any given night. <laughs> and this yes. is why the Blues made sense as the team right. for him to play against. And he did not instill mm. any confidence in me that he would look good against a team with higher f- firepower on their offense. And you're hoping that until you start racking up back-to-backs in lots of games and lots of days, you don't need to do that. Yep. You don't need to say, oh, hey, we're doing a... We're doing a back-to-back. I don't even know their back-to-backs this year. It's but not, like the first one's the end of November. We're like, doing, we're, we're you know, a, like the, a Calgary Edmonton or or yeah. an LA Anaheim kind of back-to-back where you're like, hey, that. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Here's what I'm going to say to this, like about the decision to play them. They had a plan, for sure. They had a plan, and, and it looks like they stuck to the plan. I tell you one thing. I would have maybe looked to say, oh, I'm changing the plan. We've lost two in a row. I want to win that game at yeah. home. I, I kudos to them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and I'm not saying I'm not that dumb to say it's a must win after eight games, but Come on, you no. lose two and then you lose the third one. Then you go on into Vegas. You you when you lose a game or two, you want to nip it in the butt right away. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's something they didn't do last game. Now it's easy to say, okay, we go back to our start, right? I, I think it's just human nature. Uh, so I'm assuming they had a plan before. Kudos to them to stick to their plan. And, uh, you know, like I said, seems like he's worked hard in practice. Guys like him. And it was good. To, and, again, it goes back to the Fords to even giving Dermy a chance, right? You know what I mean? Because yeah. he's worked hard. He's a good teammate. And, you know, I don't want to hear anything else about it. But, you know what I mean? Somewhere, somehow, is you're part of a team, and you got to make sure that Everybody gets involved, too. And I, I thought it was a right way to do it. Kudos to them. Coaching yeah. staff, I mean. And ultimately, like the nitpicks about Pearl's Vatov and all that yeah, are yeah, just yeah. that. He no, no, we're all exactly. the same Your page. backup yeah. goaltender gave up one goal. You're not, awesome. li- you're not criticizing and that guy no. for real. And no. to even back that up even more, you take a look at that goal given up. A terrible turnover from Jack Johnson in the yeah. offensive zone. And then and it, a, it leaves Josh Manson. It hanging. totally hangs him out to dry. And then a horrible back check from Nathan McKinnon, who's just coasting yeah. through the neutral zone. And where does that puck get shot from? The middle of the ice. And and you see, as it's happening, McKinnon realizes, oh shit, that's my guy, and takes a step or two, but he's too far behind the play yeah. to do anything about it. Yeah, you need to take those steps in your own zone yeah, through the exactly. neutral zone. Yep. That's the commitment to the to the details. Like uh, I, this is a nitpick. Totally, like, totally. It's Nathan McKinnon. He had well, two points tonight. And, and, like, uh, <laughs> that's like an important for me just to just to clarify. Of yeah, we're going to be a little critical of those things, but he's the highest paid player in the NHL right now. I get to say this for one year. Yeah, he's the highest paid player <laughs> we'll in the NHL starting next year. <laughs> yeah, he's the highest paid player in the NHL right now. You want to see a little bit better on that yeah. uh, from that well, and, aspect and, of the game from him. And this is a thing that we've seen consistently throughout McKinnon's career. If you had yes. one thing about him, when plays die or go the wrong way in the offensive zone, he has always been very emotive and a little bit slow <laughs> to get back. <laughs> and it's not great when it results in a goal against you. I know. Put it that way. But, you know. We're nitpicking everything because this is the only goal the Avs gave up in the game. Yeah, <laughs> totally. So, yeah. For the for the record, we're talking about Josh Manson got hung out to dry, but otherwise and he was great tonight. That's dude. a great night out of Josh Manson. Yeah. That's a great night out of Josh Manson. Yep, made multiple great plays, like, both on both sides. Since you're talking about Josh Manson, for yes, me, we are. I know we were waiting for Mac and Miko to to have bigger games in the last two games, but for me. On top of it, I wanted Lekkonen to have a bigger... I didn't like his game last game, and I'm a big fan. I, I have to be honest, I didn't like his game. I didn't like Josh Manson's game. I didn't like his road trip. So those two guys, those are bounce-back games. I love it. I love it. And you know Lecky I mean? has a bad night, uh, especially the Sabres game, where you are watching him, and you're like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. Just brutal. He has like 10 of those a year. Yeah. They are rare for Artori Lekkonen to have games like that. There are quieter games. But actively having a bad one, he does not have very many of those. Well, and for him to get it back, yeah. Well, and, and here's great. what I liked especially about tonight from Lucky is he had a couple of good opportunities early that he <clears> didn't <throat> finish. But he keeps working. He keeps going to the right areas of the ice. Eventually, you get a beautiful setup from Miko and Kale. But mm. Lucky's the one in the front of the net to tuck her in. So it's a nice play by him too. Yeah, it was, totally. It was, a, it was a good finish and. You can't just dismiss that. No. That's no pun intended, saying good finish. But <laughs> <laughs> also, you think about how many chances he's had right on the doorstep this year. Don't yep. don't dismiss that he was able to tuck that thing home. Yep. You need patience. It's not that easy in the NHL because there's, 
you know, sometimes you don't have a lot of time, but you have to know when you have time. And he knew right there he had time, and that was an awesome finish. Like, again, for a guy that, you know, barely scores 20, right? I mean, he's never going to score more than that. Let's not kid ourselves. He's not. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. You can play with. If he got to 25 at any point in his career, I'd yeah. be pretty surprised. That's what I'm saying. So, so I, I'm, I'm you, not man. bashing him for that. I'm saying, but that was nice patience. Miles had that in the first, and he kind of fumbled it. I love Miles, but I'm not criticizing him. But it's like, <laughs> it's awesome. But sometimes it gets like you get excited, like, oh, 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 oh. it is the National Hockey League. You know, it's a tough league to score goals in. Look, and, man, Miles Wood had the best pass of the night with that little hand yeah. pass in front of the net. Yeah, yeah. Was, that's the totally point. That's the play I'm talking about. So he landed on his it belly so and good. he saw it. I mean, I don't think the camera no would have caught behind, that. behind him. I loved like, it. it. The Look, presence of dude, mind for him to make that play the, was awesome. Great. The NHL desperately needs the challenge rule of cool. Like, no matter if it's illegal or not, be like, that yeah. was dope. It counts. Yeah, we're, it. Putting, we're putting this on the, the team's Twitter account. Yeah. This will get blasted on Instagram. This is happening. It has to stand. <laughs> it was great because he, he went on his belly. He went like this, and then he looked up a little bit like, okay, like I didn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was, was like, awesome. I, it this was is awesome. probably going to be too niche of a reference, but it was a lot like what Jason Williams, the old NBA point guard, the, used to used to make the behind the, the, the elbow behind yeah, the back exactly yeah. because he would always he would always make that pass and he would like look away to be like I ain't even looking at where this is going for extra style and Miles Wood did that shit and it was awesome that was great it was such an awesome moment for him not to I, I derailed your point but yeah like you, to get that from Arturi like it's a great finish and it's he needed that they needed that line needed that after you don't see that line have quiet games like that yep. very often okay. to see them in a row like that is very very rare yeah so to see to, to find for that it kind a little of, bit yeah and Makar, he's not on that line but he might as well be <laughs> he's, he he spends an awful lot of time on the ice with those cats when a deep pair is playing 12 to 15 yeah. minutes with that forward right. line <laughs> right <laughs> So to, to, to see those guys get like kind of turn it back on where it was like, we always knew this trio, you know, throw in Kale and Taves, like pretty good. These guys have been, they've spent a lot of time on NHL ice together. They get it. They yep. understand how to play as a, as a, as a group. And we saw that on the power play goal. We saw that on like goal. goal too. Yeah. yeah. They're so fun to watch, man. And, and so I, I don't want to gloss over that. A good night for Kale McCarr as well. Oh, a guy dude. who comes off of a night where you weren't even sure if he was going to be healthy. Crazy to me that uh, their worst defenseman tonight is Jack Johnson. Yep. And I think it's not close. Pretty clearly. Yep. And I think the other five are all good. Yep. Yeah. I think all five of those guys, I liked stuff out of all five of them. Yep. But that's the scary thing when you 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 go in the mo I practiced yesterday and there's no bow, there's no kale. Yeah. Yep. You're like, oh God. I mean, that's normal. I mean, it's a normal feeling. Like as a player, as a fan, as a coach, as a teammate, you're like, oh God, you know, here we go again. You know what I mean? Which at some point, again, knock on wood, like you you're gonna have some of those nights, right? Throughout the season. But it was great to see them at practice this morning. Then it was great to see them tonight. And then you get what? Bo as a goal, Kale has two assists. What a difference they make on a on a roster. Yep. I mean, and and hopefully Bo can get his game going right. He's he's had some tough games, but he's had some better games. Yep. And uh, I, I think know, his last three or four been, games. That's what I mean. I think he's getting game. there. And I, you could see. I saw his interview after the game. He's got a big smile on his face. His smile's infectious, right? It is. Like he seems to be. No, he is a nice kid. You know what I mean? Like, and he is infectious. And when he's happy. It transpires to other guys, and you know what I mean? And it keeps the room loose and younger. So, all right. When you, when you talk about a guy, big smile, happy like that, like when you have a big personality, you have a big impact on things like that. So, when you're down, it's very obvious. Yes. When you're up, it's also it's, very obvious. Yeah, and, and it's, it's infectious. Easy, yeah. It's easy to feed it off is. of both. Yeah. So, true. to have him turn that around, the goal against the Islanders is. The turning point of his season, yeah. for my money, Same. Yeah, it's yeah. a great Honestly, goal. It, yeah. it flipped that game yeah. on its head, which is great in the moment. Yep. But you saw his reaction to it, of and that he, release. Yeah, he could have easily scored in both Pittsburgh and Buffalo, and then for him to get another goal tonight, it's like Bo coming, man. I mean, yep. he's he is on his way to being the guy that we were expecting to see this year. This is he's now put together these kinds of solid games where it was like. Weird start, a lot of penalties, not very good play. Yeah, it is. It has taken a major jump, right, high end jump turn. forward, yeah. but a big. Uh, just the last point on that, like 
a big part of the abs is their makeup is, and we hear that all the time from the guys that talk about it from the coaching staff, deactivation, right? Yeah. Yep. If you look at the last game in Pitt, like I think they had a total of like two total shots on net <laughs> yeah. as a decoy. It was not a ton. That's not a lot. And I think tonight, I don't even have the stats in front of me, but you can tell they had a lot more. You could see these were jumping up. Kale was jumping in. You know, Bo was jumping in. Sammy was jumping in. It was nice to see. You know what I mean? Like, it was, that's Avalanche hockey. That's all they get. Nine. All, what is it, nine? Yeah, hey, Eight. Go. I'm sorry, eight. eight. They still, okay, perfect. They're still, still calling Curtis McDermott. You know what I mean? Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> the Der- yeah, Dermy got well, a shot. They almost scored. Yeah. I, I think that it's a good point because you look at that Pitt and Buffalo games and it's like, Yeesh. When the abs are not passing well, when they're not managing the puck well, it's hard for those defensemen to activate, right? Because 100%. the puck ends up going the other way quick on you. Yep. But when the abs are playing like yeah. this, when they're managing the puck, it's the easiest thing in the world. And that's where, that's where you get like a little bit of bickering on the bench. It's so funny because then the D's blame the forward, forwards blame the yeah, D. Yeah. You know, it's just human nature, right? Yeah, I mean, totally. It's not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying it's... It's like uh, it's like a marriage, it's just what right? Happens. You know, you have arguments in the house sometimes, and that's what that is. You know, you do your job. No, you do your job, and then all of a sudden, you know, that's what happens. Uh, well, they don't do marriage counseling, but if you have been in a car accident or something like that, Bacchus and Shanker has your back. What was that? What? Go for it. I had to transfer somehow. All right. All right. He did. That was a nice flow. Thank you. Some respect around here. Thank you. I guess I'm just a hater. Tonight. That's what Bacchus and Shanker will give you, though. They'll give you a free consultation if you've been injured and it's not your fault, even if it's like something at work or you're downtown on a scooter, whatever it is. Free consultation at the 222-2222 number. Uh, I think I put too many twos in there, but that's all right. It's a phone number amount of twos. Yeah. Or go to coloradolaw.net. Keep jamming on two. Eventually, it'll you'll start end, to ring. Yeah, you'll end up and with you'll know you have shaker. enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if they think you have a case, you will pay them nothing up front. They don't get paid until you get paid. So you don't need money to make money in this case. They just want to get you what you deserve. And they're very good at that. They've been doing it for over 25 years here in Colorado. Go check them out. Bacchus and Shanker wins. Uh, and then we're also brought to you by the folks over at Breckenridge Distillery. If you want to get some winner mm-hmm. shots of your own, check out breckdistillery.com today. You can order online, or of course, you can always go to your local liquor store or a Breck Distillery location. They have award winning bourbon whiskey. They also have a bunch of other alcohols, new uh, vodka for the Broncos, white helmets and jerseys. That's super cool. Tons of awesome choices from Breck Distillery. And they're giving away sweet tickets to the Broncos' New Year's Eve game against the Chargers. Hanging out at a suite at Mile High is just a dope experience no matter what. Use the hashtag Broncos Bourbon on Instagram and tag a picture, tag even a picture of your Broncos, whatever your favorite picture of a Broncos is. Send it on in there. They will pick 10 favorites at the start of December. And then have a fan vote at BreckenridgeDistillery.com slash bourbon of the Broncos. So go check that out. Have a good time. Maybe you'll win some sweet tickets. Uh, third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. We've kind of, void, of avoided talking about him too much, um, but I want to talk about Nathan McKinnon a little bit. Really don't think it was that good of a game for him tonight. Don't think he played his best, but he still comes through. The Avs need an insurance goal. He shows amazing patience cutting through the middle of the ice, waits it out, allows Bo, Bo and Byram to activate into the play. And then it's a great finish from Bo. Listen, there's seven and two yeah. after nine. Uh, World class play right there. Bennington, no, he's a shooter, right? Yeah, you know? yeah. And then he has to commit to him. You know, he has to commit to. Him. And then all of a sudden, he makes that play. I, I, he's just he's an elite player. He, like you said, you can have an off night, but there's so much respect for him around the league that teams will cue on him and you yep. know and opens up ice for other people yep. and, and obviously Miko benefits from that and vice versa and you know whoever plays with them uh the scary thing is they're seven and two and then he hasn't played it it would be the first one to tell you he hasn't been at his best there's yep. been a few games a few instances but and we all know he can string along of a bunch of games oh, or, yeah. you know what i mean and it, it gets scary and it's scary for the rest of the league so i think it's <laughs> it's a good sign right because they're seven and two uh, so their their ten game segment, you know, after Saturday in Vegas, here's your ten game segment. You win that game, you're eight and two. You lose it, you're seven and three. You're playing seven hundred hockey or yep. eight hundred hockey or whatever it is, right? You Not know? too so shabby either way. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And then your best player hasn't been 
at his best. Even I'm not saying he's been crappy. I'm saying there's, there's another more. level yeah. to him for sure. And we all seen it. And he's gonna get one of those ten game segments where he gets twenty four points, yeah. twenty five points. It's gonna happen. It's always happened, and they will happen again. It just didn't happen in the first ten game segment, right? Yep. Because I'm, I'm not sure what his total is, but he's got to be. Yeah, he's it's right around a point. Right per around game, a point. Yeah. Per game, yeah. So. He's more than fine, but there's another level to him, and that's what's scary for the rest of the league. For the record, Nathan McKinnon, while on the ice at 5v5 tonight. Dominant, yeah. Abs. Corsi, not great. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Not amazing. It's positive. It's plus five, so it's like, yeah, cool. whatever. Yeah. But scoring chances, 10 to 2 in there favor of the Avalanche. Yeah. High danger chances, 5 to nothing. Yeah. That's it. So, elite. elite. Tough, for, tough for him. One of those two scoring chances that happens when he's on the ice goes in the net. Yeah. But those kinds of numbers are what we expect out of Nathan McKinnon yeah. in yeah. terms of quality of chances generated. And we're sitting here talking about how oh, Nathan McKinnon can be better. There's another level. That's not to say he's struggled. It's that, just oh no. he's that good. That speaks more to what a special player yeah, he is. Exactly. And the level that he's capable of getting to. Yep. Because you're there will be a six game stretch where he has 15 points oh, yeah. and the abs will go five and one in that stretch. Yep. Mm -hmm. He had two points tonight. This might yep. be game one of one of those stretches to be 100%. honest. So yep. it's, it, that is, that is a guy that, and Oh, by the way, the other superstar on the abs, Miko has 14 points in nine games. So in, <laughs> is and with a couple of bad games. Yeah. <laughs> like, two shutouts in there for the abs. Might, <laughs> might be on his way to another career year. Yeah. Like, he oh, looks, yeah. He looks, for my money, Miko Rantanen looks better than he ever has. I agree. Oh, even I, better than last year's in, insane breakout, see, breakout season. He's, he's, you can just see it with Miko. You know when Miko's turned on, and he's yeah. turned oh, yeah. on this year. Yeah. <laughs> Disregarding uh, the phrasing. Yeah. The well, guy you know. the, means business. Yeah. There you go. He is, he's not kidding around. Um, mm -hmm. And the same thing was true of Kale McCarr, where you're just like, this is how they're built. Yep. Everybody loves it. Oh, they're a one-line team. Oh, they're this. They're that. Yeah, it's not true. But also, when those guys combine, they for, can get away with being when those, one. When those guys <laughs> combine for two or three goals in a single game on a semi-regular basis, yep. you win a lot. Well, you just win a lot. The thing is, when you have that many insanely talented players, there are nights where the other team just goes. I don't know. We played against the three of the top ten players in the world. We just lost. There's nothing we could do. It's a it's a really nice thing to have to say For the sure. least. And then go back to again. I'm older. Go back to Canada Cup. What eighty seven? And then you got Gretzky Lemieux, right? That famous I was goal. negative four years old. Okay, here you go. But I'm just telling you, like, <laughs> born you're, you're, you're putting the two best centers in the league. You put them on the same line. What happens? Magic, right? You know, I they figure out one plays wing. You center. You create two talent. You you put two talented guys. It creates magic, you know, and and those two, whether they're apart or they get put back together, I don't mind when they're apart. I don't mind when they get put back together. You know, they're on the ice together for power plays, like we talk about the three headed monster. So it's fun to see. It's fun they to traded see. one three headed monster for another. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's just it's amazing. So amazing. It's it's wildly impressive to yeah, watch when they when they play well. Yep. Um. Yeah, all this uh, chat is once again forcing the Sam Gerard conversation. He was great tonight, guys. Yeah, he was awesome. Well, because your shirt. He was. He had the tornado. La tornade. Yeah. He Did, was. He was great tonight, and the trade. Sammy. The trade Gerard people can just shut up. <laughs> Amy Gerard is an excellent hockey player on a championship team mm -hmm. so sam gerard is an Look, upper echelon player in the uh, national hockey on he's team. in the one third he's not he's not at the bottom he's a he's a he's a he's a he's a awesome asset for for a team like the avalanche and on a team that's a great player seven and two right now yeah. have been very very good other than the two games where they clearly weren't yeah Anyone who's talking about trading sam gerard has a spe specific vendetta does not actually care about the quality of hockey the avalanche are playing yeah. That's all there is to that. Hey, listen, 32 teams will take Sam Gerard in their top four out of 32. Serious so, question. If Sam Gerard was a St. Louis Blue, would he be their best defenseman? Probably. Yes. Like, I mean, Colton yes. Pareko has no, that's maybe right gone about the way same. down since Petrangelo left yeah. and he got exposed as a top pairing D. 
anybody would take Sam Gerard. Justin league, Justin so. Falk has just been like fine. So mid, yeah. And yeah. Sam Gerard is not a number one defenseman no. in the NHL. He should not be. I don't even think he's a top pairing yeah. guy. Yeah. I'm not making that argument. I'm just saying there are teams out there that are looking at a guy like Sam Gerard, going, "Come on, yep, I'll take him." No, no crap. <laughs> Thirty-two teams. Would you think take you think they would rather have Nick Letty, <laughs> Tory Krug, or Sam Gerard? Give me a break. Good kid, good Guy player, awesome. good teammate. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, it, we haven't talked about him a lot this year because it's been kind of quiet and there have been bigger <laughs> stories going on. Sam Gerard has been really good this year. It's been awesome. His defense especially has been yes. locked in. And he needed that goal on, with the empty Hit net the because yeah. the, offense, the offense has been lacking. Yeah. But also his reputation as an offensive defenseman is overstated yeah. and his defensive acumen is understated. <laughs> Simply because he's five foot nine. So uh, uh, Sam Gerard uh, is really, uh, we really don't need good. to talk about this anymore. Let's move on. Uh, third periods. Abs continue to be really, really good at them. They score two, give up none tonight. That moves their third periods. I think it's don't include empty netters both ways. I think the Avs are now nine goals for three against in Oof. third periods. Really, really good. Um, I, I, we were talking about it at the end of the game. If you had to pick one period for your team to be the best at, it's the third, right? Yes. Absolutely. I don't, absolutely. I don't, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I'm going to say Vegas is a good third period. They've been team. very. I good mean, team, they, they've always been a good third period team, and I can't wait for Saturday. You know what I mean? Because yep. you're talking about the last two Stanley Cup champions. You're talking about two third period teams. It'd be interesting to see if they go in the third tied. Be awesome to watch and, and see what happens. No, they're not. No, don't give me any AJ that. wants a blowout. Yeah, they oh, need no. to. They need to go into the third up five to nothing. Oh no, I, I'm fools. like I'm crazy. I like tight game. I like oh, I like oh, it. I love I, if it ends up being. A, I <laughs> hope it's a great game. Go, yeah. But if it's not going to be, let yeah. it go. Not yeah. a great game in the other way. All right. Point being, I just want to smoke everybody, man. That's, that's <laughs> ads are a team that are starting to build some of those characteristics. Eric, you talked about it in the pregame. Make Ball Arena a hard place for other teams to come into. Third periods, teams are going to be afraid of this team late in hockey games. They're starting to build some of those reputations. When you got year. consistency like that, like what you're saying, then teams come into building and then they know, like, oh, God, these guys are, you know, 14 and 2 at home and then they're smoking teams in the third. It's yeah. talked about, it's, it's talked about in the pregame meetings mm. at the rink and, and it's important to, to, to establish that identity. It, it is important because the more you talk about it and it's a, you know, I don't want to say copycat, Lee. It's nothing to do with this, but it's, you know, teams will come in and they have their meeting and it's like, oh, man, you should have seen last game, you know, and then that's what they talk about. And, oh, yeah, and by the way, they are sick in the third, so we better not be behind because, yep. you know, it's going to be even tougher. So it puts a little bit of extra pressure, puts a little bit of stuff in your mind. And it's like when you walk in the building and then you see welcome to mile high, right? Five, you know, whatever it is, 5,000, uh, feet. <laughs> and it's just like gets into your mind. You're like, oh, really? You is know that, what I mean? Like, it's crazy. So Yeah, Canada does use the metric, don't they? You weirdos. Yeah. For the for the record, the Avs have 11 goals for in the third period. Yeah. This doesn't consider empty net situation. The Avs have like two that. empty netters just, and they have one against. So I think they have, they have, they, they definitely have more than two empty netters. Oh well, with the I think the one tonight. Well, makes the Russ uh, Woody first game. Yeah, right? they had the they had the one in L.A. <laughs> Natchushkin had one in Seattle, and they had two in Long Island. Mm, point well, being, maybe anyway, not not my point. Yeah. They definitely did. Uh, they have eleven goals in the third period and only four against, which is the second lowest number in the league. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Vegas, just because we're talking about it, they have fourteen goals in the third period and seven against. Okay, so we're so talking about so a lot more. Seven, both seven, both yeah. teams are plus seven. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's my and point. if you look at the other teams that have a lot of goals in the third period, they've also given up a lot, except LA, who has 16 for and seven against. Well, and you what know what up, LA? I, I did a video Your on team. this a couple games ago. You should go watch it because I'm not going to get into all the extra underlying mm. stats, but they're insanely good for Colorado in yeah. the third period. And well, oh. and you make this point. <laughs> Do you guys want to know up. the numbers for tonight? I know it's good. <laughs> 5v5, 16 minutes played. The Avs have a 2-1 lead Yep. going into this. Yep. Just extra context. Remember, they start the first 90 they seconds kill off a PK. on a yep. PK. Yeah. They kill that off. 
Abs out with a at five v five, eighteen to eleven in terms of Corsi. That's good. Yep. Eight to seven shots on goal. It's fine. Yep. Yeah. Whatever. Like Danger. If, when you're yeah. when you're leading. And you lead the third period and you're doing five real five. Well. You're yeah. playing. Well, there's going to be a push from the other team. Yeah. yeah. Scoring chances for the Avs fourteen to four. Oof. High danger chances six to two. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, in a game that by the end of it they were leading by three. Yeah, but they were leading eight to four in high danger chances after two periods and down. Actually, they were tied 14-14 in scoring chances going and into the third. just dominated the third. The Avs those, doubled yeah. their scoring chances in the third period yep. in a game they were leading. Yep. So. <laughs> So what it means is they've been able to over or overcome or, you know, the pushes from the other team. Yep. You know what I mean? And, and make it, you know, no pun intended, but, you know, yeah, bury yeah. them when they're at, I mean, know, every year, an there's so much talk about the turtle every year for teams that lead. Mm -hmm. You have not seen the Avs turtle once this year. And if you look at the actual shot chart here in terms of when the shots get taken. Yep. The Avs score right away. Immediately yep. after the PK ends, they yep. score basically the first shift. And then it goes the, then the that flurry, bar, it, yeah. it goes straight up for the Avalanche. Yep. And the Blues never push. Yep. The Avs get the fourth goal and it never comes. Yep. They choke the life out of the Blues to the point where no. they just gave up. Yep. And then and the Avs just chilled the rest of like the game. They because they're better. Gave up. Right? They yep. played to their potential. They're better. Yep. And then I go back to the turtle. Sometimes I get in arguments with people, oh my God, they turn. No, it's just they weren't able to overcome the push from the other team. It's right. the National Hockey. Yeah. There's some good teams, some I, good players. People you know definitely I mean? oversell. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. No, but I, but I do agree because sometimes you do turtle. Yeah, no, especially sure. if you're sometimes. an inexperienced team and you're scared to lose, and you know what I mean. The Avs that, expect to win. When Philly was in Vegas. Yeah, and they had that two-one yes. lead, yes. and they spent the first ten That's minutes it. getting caved. Some of it is Vegas pushing, and yes. Vegas is great, and yeah. some of it is the Flyers don't know how to win. That's yeah. right. They are oh. not comfortable with, with winning. That's and you look right. at this Blues team tonight. They come out. This group has no idea how to win. No. They are completely clueless. These guys, this collection of players with the leadership group that they have, has no idea how to win as a team together. Well, and that's what we talked about before the game. And Ryan, you know, yeah. O'Reilly. No O'Reilly. No, no, those guys, no, those guys. Yeah. I mean, no Petrangelo. There's a big Tarasenko. Significant yeah. decline know, in is. their, in their ability is. to be relevant. It is. And, and you talk about them giving up. Look at the end of this game. They pull the goalie. Sam Gerrard hits a post, and Berube just says, ah, fuck it. He, had, he does not bother. Yeah, he just leaves Biddington in for the rest of the game. They, they take the – so Gerrard hits the, the crossbar while on the empty yep. net. Puck goes out of play. They have a face-off. You put him back they in, put makes Binnington sense. They Binnington back in, and Binnington stays the rest of the game. Yep. They don't what even happened, try What happened him. in those 40 seconds? Craig Berube was like, Shh. Game's over. Gave him an opportunity to do something, and this game should be 5-1 to one right now. Yep. Your own coach packed it in yep. on you. Yep. That can't be a good feeling either. All right. Not that it makes a difference because, like, they were losing that game. They, had, they weren't generating anything. But, like, that's rough. Yep. That's rough. Uh, got a couple of super chats to get to, I think. Quite a few. Uh, $2 from Austin, who says, Prozotov made use of his six foot five frame tonight. Yeah, if you're big, just get in the way of stuff. Goaltending's easy. <laughs> That's all goaltending is, is just getting in front of things. <laughs> when we're like, oh, that puck just hit him. Yeah, it's called a save. It's literally his job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to get in front of as many of those things as you can. Thank you, Austin. $20 from Dookie Shoes, who says, NHL TV plus VPN, no guesswork, no weird sites, every single NHL game in HD that you can replay. Cheers, fam. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, everybody that wanted to watch the game and knows how to watch the game still got to watch yeah, the game. Anybody that but. understands uh, VPNs is already there. Yep. The people that don't aren't going to. Yep. And that's the whole point of why you should broadcast your games. That's why carrier disputes are stupid. Yep. Sign a deal. Yep. Uh, $10 from Broker, who says, how Miko was able to thread the puck between two abs and Bennington. Great vision, great accuracy. Thank God for the moose. He's special. He just built different. <sighs> if you shoot phrase. that, AJ, you hit this. <laughs> AJ, Get over it. If you, shoot the, if you shoot that puck from where Miko was, you hit the two abs guy in front of the net. I shoot wide, mm -hmm. but Miko threads it. Love it. I'm right-handed, so I definitely don't okay. shoot that. You do shoot right into the two Avs guys that were in front. I would oh. whiff, fall over, and yeah, I, you're, falling you're probably my back. still giving me more credit than I deserve. <laughs> 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 Thank you for the 10, <laughs> Broker. Uh, $10 from Cody, who once again just says boobs. 
At least he's consistent. Yeah, sticking with it. Okay. And, hey, look, I love a good bit. <laughs> uh, and then $2 from Degro who says, FYI, G-Man had the first shots on goal. First shot on goal? G-Y? Okay. Carried. Thank you very much for all of the super chats. Uh, anything else we wanted to touch on today before we go home and do a whole bunch more work? Yeah, a couple milestones, right? Bo Barn, 100th yeah, career game. that's true. Avalanche, 900th career win. And I'm going to call him again, P-Dog, because I'm not <laughs> attempting his name. His first, first career win. win, win so congrats yeah. to him. 600th franchise win uh, at home. Yeah, that's right. So There you go. There uh, you go. Franchise, Avalanche. I think yeah, it's I think it's, it's I, I think it's Avalanche. Yeah, it's yeah. Avalanche. Avalanche, yeah. not Nordiques. Avalanche. Nordiques did lose a lot of games, but they definitely I think it's Avalanche. Do. Some of those years you go back and you're like, oh, that team won nine games that year. Yeah, <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> wasn't that bad. It was rough out there. Uh, anyway, we are brought to you by Breckenridge Brewery, the official beer of DNBR. You can get yours on tap here at the bar, eight different kinds. Uh, also find it at your local liquor store. Use the Breck Beer locator online at breckbrew.com. Uh, and then go check out Illegal Pete's. You can get uh, delicious burritos over at Illegal Pete's. And they're bringing back their awesome in-season thing. Uh, if you bring an Avs ticket or a Nuggets ticket from the previous game, they will give you a free drink with your order just for going and enjoying some sports locally. So go check out Illegal Pete's. They also have happy hour from 3 to 8 p.m. Get yourself some delicious food. Uh, I know Kale had it for lunch today, and then Adam was like, I'm going for dinner. And Kale was like, oh, man, I just ate that. <laughs> This is a funny interaction, to say the least. But that's all I got. Everybody so, likes it. Yeah, they're just good food. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, so, Riley Tufty? He was cool. He was good. I like, again, I don't know that he did enough to keep himself in the lineup, but I thought he was good. I didn't look at the ice time. It wasn't a ton. No. Don't need to look. We didn't really talk about the lineup changes. I mean, McDermott. I mean, Tufty. we talked about him in the pregame. They, they existed. It's a presence. Again, I thought Tufty was actually pretty decent in the offensive zone. Didn't wasn't super noticeable outside of a couple of plays, but was good. McDermott is what it is. We've had that conversation a million times. If your decor's solid, if if your top end guys play, you're going to be victorious yeah, more often. Right, than those guys aren't going to. And the guys well. aren't yep. going to. You know exactly. They only matter when they matter. But uh, they did their job. They. Oh. The Avs took care of business at this one. Next game is Vegas, which is a big one, but they have two days off before that. Uh, mom we, trip. Yeah. Yeah. A whole, uh, the whole mom. I mean, they were there for this game tonight. Is that the the Avs win easily with the mom? So they have to stay until the Avs lose? Is that the rule now? Ross Golden said his mom was his lucky charm. There you go. She's got to stay. Yeah. It is. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. I think we're talking around the league tomorrow, and then we might be doing a mailbag Friday. So keep your... Uh, Questions ready. We haven't done one in a while. Yeah, it's been a bit. Yeah. So, figured. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, speaking of, more than just us doing around the league stuff here at mm. All City now. Uh, if you didn't see on Twitter, we just dropped our new national podcast network, which includes uh, an NBA, an NFL, and an NHL show. Uh, I'm sure most of you know Pete Blackburn. He is hosting our. National hockey show four days a week. It's called What Chaos. You can find them on Twitter. Yep. People like Go get DJ them. Bean. Yep. They interviewed uh, Brad Marchand today for their inaugural show. Great. So. I know they have a lot of plans for a lot more. Lots uh, of big stuff. Yeah. yeah. A, lot, a lot more guys coming in studio up there. So go give them a look. Listen. You also find it in our uh, you, our Twitter, not Twitter, uh, our Spotify feed. So. You'll see yeah, I think an episode or two of those will the be first on the Spotify feed, Spotify feed to let people know that it exists, and yep. then uh, that, that that just don't be surprised when that pops up. Yep. Well, so, welcome aboard to the fellows. Yeah, should be a fun another ride. another edition. We had the Flyers guys, then we yeah. had a national show. Mm -mm. All, all city all rolling. City, all city just keeps growing, man. It's pretty exciting for us. We're enjoying it. We are going to get out of here for the night, though. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us. We appreciate y'all. Again, we'll be back tomorrow, the two p.m. time slot. We hope to see you there, and we'll talk to you later. We all city like the mayor. 